for this opportunity to be before you once again. I'm not going to be before you too long, but I do want to give this message because God has put it on my heart a little while now, and I've tried, as I said, I think this is my fourth attempt to give this word, so I'm praying that the fourth time is a charm. <laughs> um, and it goes along with what Minister Tahara was saying a, few, a number of weeks ago. She spoke a message called, What's in Your Heart? And she talked about, among other things, the fact that God searches the heart and he knows our heart. She went on to talk about what, what do we do once we realize that there are things that aren't right with us. She also talked about the responsibility of Christians in the sense that life is a sacrifice to God. She also said, is your heart speaking Christ? She also talked about we have to have a renewing of our minds. And then she went on to talk about love and action. And she said, bless those that persecute you. To do, do not repay evil with evil. She also talked about to continue on in love. And lastly, she mentioned that sometimes the answer is just to be silent. Just to be silent. So these are some of the things that she covered in, in what I'm calling part one of, of the sermon. And I want to finish it off with a sermon that is entitled Heart Surgery. And so what God had put on my, on my, on my mind is this depiction that we he have here. That there are many things that we have and that we are harboring in our heart. And that God wants to deliver us from. And so, as usual, I like to start my messages off with a question. And so the question that I have today is, what is the purpose of the heart? And so I looked it up in the dictionary, and it said, from the and I put it like this, it says, from the natural perspective, it is a muscle that pumps blood to all parts of your body. The blood pumped by your heart provides your body with oxygen and nutrients in order for it to function. The functions of a heart are to the pump the blood and oxygen around the body and deliver waste products in the form of carbon dioxide back to the lungs to be expelled from the body. Then it also says that uh, the heart consists of four chambers, separ each separately separated by valves that um, direct the blood in different directions. And lastly, Conditions that affect the heart include coronary heart disease, angina, which is heart pain caused by a buildup of plaque in the coronary arteries, heart attack, heart failure, heart valve disease, and abnormal heart rhythms, and these are just to name a few. So I just wanted to point this out from the natural perspective to give us an idea of exactly how the heart um, has a role in our lives and in our body. Now, do we have any doctors out there? Do I have any doctors? No doctors? Um, do I have anybody that's watched a doctor prepared on, t on television? Where's my Grey's Anatomy people? Okay, Jordan, Sister Jordan, come up here for a second. <laughs> bring your microphone, bring your microphone. So, given your wealth of medical expertise, come closer, come closer. <laughs> I'm your daddy, for goodness sakes. <laughs> given your wealth of knowledge based on your years of watching Grey's Anatomy. 20 seasons. <laughs> <laughs> would you say that the heart is an important part of the body? Yes. Okay, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, based on her profound medical knowledge based on her study of Gray's Anatomy, we can say that one out of one surgeons or people that know surgeons or people that watch surgeons would agree that the heart is an important part of the body. Now I say this in jest, clearly I'm saying this in jest, but I wanted to say this because I needed us to understand that the heart serves an important part of the body, but so does it in our spiritual lives as well. And it's important that we understand that just as the body uses the heart to take in all of these things from the atmosphere, everything that you breathe in 
gets converted and put into our bloodstream. And then it goes down into the heart, and the heart is responsible for cleaning all of this material that comes into the blood. And then he takes all the negative things and it pushes it out into the atmosphere through the lungs. I didn't even realize that that's what the heart actually did, but that's one of its important pieces. And part of the reason why I started thinking about this sermon is because lately I've been hearing about a lot of young individuals, even people that I know, young individuals having heart attacks. I mean, at very, very young ages, and I was like, what is going on? How is this happening? And, and I got worried about it because I'm like, these people seem like they were good, in good health. One of my friends was a ref, so he was running up and down the court all the time. So, I mean, he wasn't in the greatest of shape, but you wouldn't look at him and say, yeah, he's going to have a heart attack any day now. He looked like he was in decent shape. But the thing about the heart is that you can never tell by just looking at somebody how their heart is doing. And what God was showing me, the same thing applies in the house of God. He said there's many people that are walking around here in the atmosphere, in our presence, that are on the verge of a heart attack. And the reason why this is the case is because we haven't learned that all those things that continue to come into our lives, all the atmospheric, atmospheric things that are coming into our lives are staying confined inside of our heart. Why? Because we haven't learned how to let those things go. We haven't learned how to fully utilize our hearts to, to take those things that may be negative, take those things that people may have said about you, take those things that have hurt you, and turn those into something positive that could be dispelled from the body. And so at, just like in the natural heart, what happens is when things come into the heart and they aren't processed correctly, then they form what is called plaque. Do you know what plaque is? Many of us have a lot of plaque on your teeth. When you look at your teeth, you got plaque there. It's a hardened process of things that are stuck to your teeth. And when you look at it over time, it does what? It gets hard. See, if you deal with the plaque early, you might be able to just scrub it off really, really quick. But the longer you allow that plaque to stick around, it grabs hold to things and it starts to harden. And then all of a sudden, it becomes much, much harder to get rid of. How many of you like going to the dentist? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Y'all not normal. I ain't even going to count y'all. Young... Well, well, they're young still. Wait till you get older and you got cavities. <laughs> Wait till that plaque builds up on your teeth. <laughs> but the point of it is that when you go to the dentist, do you see how much work they have to do to get all that plaque on your, out of your teeth? They come at you with all these sharp objects and all these picks and all these axes, and you're like, how are you going to put that in my mouth? but becomes very, very painful to get that plaque out. But the thing is, they always tell me when they're done torturing me, if you were consistent with continuing to brush your teeth, and if you were consistent with, with flossing your teeth, then you wouldn't have this problem. And I would like to say to us today that many of us have things happening in our lives that and we are doing our normal maintenance, which would allow us to forego the pain that we will eventually have to do in order to get these things out of our life. You know, if we would simply, simply guard our hearts from those external things that we take in, we wouldn't have so much plaque buildup in our hearts. So God is challenging us today, challenging us to observe those things that have come upon us. And as I started to do that, I started looking at myself and my own self, and I started looking at my heart because I was like, wow, these guys were much older than I am. What am I going to do to make sure that I don't fall into that? So 
I said, you know, I got to double down on my exercise. I got to double down on trying to swim and make sure that I do all these things that I can do to make sure that I am not going to be sick or to have myself a heart attack. So the other day I went to the swim and the, the pool was all taken up. So I said, you know what? I'm going to play basketball. Now, yeah, hide the boot. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to go out and I'm going to play basketball today. So I went out there and I played basketball and I played for like an hour. And I was out there and I was balling and I was like, wow. When it was all over, I was like, I did it. I was successful. And no, I didn't play really well, and I didn't score a ton, ton of points, but I didn't pass out, so I'm going to put this in a win column. Because when I went in there after the first, like, two minutes, I was sucking breath, like my knees were on my hand, my hands were on my knees. I was following people on purpose just to slow the game down. They're like, will this old man get out of here? But I was determined that I was going to stick with it because I knew that the benefits of this were great. And the next day when I woke up, my body was in so much pain that I could barely move. I felt like I was about 80 years old. No, I don't even want to offend the 80-year-olds. I felt like I was 90 years old. And that went on for pretty much an entire week. So for one day of exercise, I experienced five days of torture. And I said to myself, self, are you going to go back on the next Monday and go through all this? And then I said, you know what? As much pain as I went through, it's still worth it. The benefits far exceed the pain that I have to go through. And the same thing applies in our normal life. Many times, in order to do the things that are right, we have to suffer a whole lot of pain. Have you ever noticed how doing bad seems to always be so easy to do? But doing good, there is always, always seemingly a consequence. I mean, even when you look at the food that you're supposed to eat when you're trying to live right. If you had the choice, and if whatever you ate was counted the same, if I gave you the choice between a Krispy Kreme donut and a kale salad, who would take the kale salad? Good Lord, what kind of people are you? <laughs> Krispy Kreme donut all day, every day, seven days a week. That's the obvious and only answer. But the point of the fact is, the Bible says, when I would do good, evil is present. Every time we turn around, there is something there trying to tempt us, trying to make us have a negative feeling, having negativity in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirit. How many of you are currently in a feud with either a family member, a church member, or a work coworker? You don't raise your hand. Don't worry, don't worry. She was like, I'm already, I know I'm already having a problem. We could have did with a little less neck movement. I thought, I thought we were making progress, but we're going to have to revisit this when we come back around. But the point is, all of us have these things have infiltrated our hearts. They have gotten down into our spirits, and they cling hold to us. And the thing that we have to understand as the problem with this is that we are harboring these things and they begin to form plaque in our spiritual hearts. And the, as each one of these things continues to come in, the more and more we get, the more that plaque builds up. And so what, 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 I, what I envisioned is when you have your heart built and surrounded by plaque, normally the heart, it, it, it comes in and then it goes out. And then it breathes in, and it breathes out, and then it breathes in, and it expands. But the problem is when that plaque starts to surround the heart and starts to harden, then it becomes harder for you to breathe. And now when you would normally breathe and push out positivity, there is no more positivity left because it is surrounded by all the negativity. 
let's do a quick exercise. Everybody, just close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes for a moment. Get rid of all the negative thoughts. Get rid of all the hustle and bustle. Don't think about the pot roast that's on the stove at home. Just everything out of your mind. Now, let us all just take a quick breathe in. And now breathe out. Okay, open your eyes. Now, what just happened there? When you breathed in, you took in that oxygen. It took in some negative stuff in your atmosphere as well. Someone right next to you might be sick. Some of those things got into your body. But your body then took that in, and the heart took all the negative things, and it cleaned it for you. And then it took all that stuff, and when you pushed it out, all that negative stuff that you just breathed in went out with it. Now, the question I have for you is, did you have to think about cleaning out that negativity? Did you have to tell your heart, heart, I need you to take that stuff, I need you to take that oxygen, and I need you to take all that stuff, and I need you to scrub it clean. Did you have to think about that? No, why? Because when you have a healthy heart, when you have a heart that is functioning as it's supposed to be, then all of that stuff becomes natural to you. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to do anything. The heart takes care of it for you. And I'm here to, to, here to tell you that the thing, same thing happens with your spiritual heart. That when your heart is right, when you're taking in your spirit, the things of God, when you're studying your word, when you're reading, when you're praying, when you're doing all those things and you let God come in and create in you a clean heart, then everything that you need to happen for your heart happens automatically. You don't have to worry about holding on to those negative things. You don't have to worry about being in fear. You don't have to worry about any of these things because your heart will take care of it for you automatically. But that's only if you allow God to create in you a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within you. We used to sing that, that song all, that, all the time. Create in me a clean heart. Oh, Lord, renew a right spirit within me. Return unto me the joy of thy salvation and create a new spirit within me. So it's up to us to make sure that we are guarding our hearts correctly. Correctly. Because what we see in a lot of people is that when you look at your life, you will start to realize a pattern of behavior. Some of you realize that you are sabotaging your relationships. You are sabotaging your relationship every time a good thing starts to happen in your life. Every time you get a good friend, every time you start to have a relationship with your family, something seems to all of a sudden snap and you say or do something that causes you to break that relationship, causes you to hurt somebody that you love, causes you to push them away, and you keep wondering why that is. And it's happening because there is still hurt within your heart that you have not expelled. And as a result, you are a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. You are on the verge of having what I'm calling a heart attack. A heart attack. And it's being perpetrated against the people in your life that you love the most. Do you ever notice that we always have a tendency to hurt those that love us the most? And even the people that we ourselves feel as though we love the most. But for some reason, we constantly hurt them. And that's because we are working out of a broken heart. I need to turn with you to a scripture. Let's turn to Matthew, the 12th chapter, in the 33rd verse. And I'm reading from the NIV. And it's going to go through the 37th. And it says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. Your brood, you brood of vipers, 
You can, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So the question that I have for you today is what is your heart full of? Because whatever your heart is full of is what you will be speaking. Many of you never have a kind word to say to anybody. Have you met people or do you have people like that in the family where you'd be like, oh, wow, that, what a great day. Good to see you. What's so good about this day? And you're like, it's 70 degrees out, the sun's out and shining, we don't have rain, or I don't know, any one of the above? And you're like, oh, yeah, well, my, my ankles are swollen. It's like, what in the world? You know, we all have those people in our atmosphere. No matter what you say to them, they have something to rebut that's going to be negative about them. And the thing about it is, these people have that negativity in their hearts. And so the Bible is telling us whatever we have in our heart is what we're going to speak. That's what we're going to say. If you have hurt in your heart, then when you speak to other pe what are people, what are you going to do? You're going to speak negativity and hurt to them. There's an expression that says, hurt people hurt people. And I know that to be true. And so the word is just reminding us that we have to be careful of what we have in our heart. And the word was even talking about this brood of vipers. These people that are negative. And you notice how when negative people start coming together and talking and start commiserating, all of a sudden, everybody in that group is more negative. Have you ever accidentally got yourself in the environment of negative people? You walk into there and you're like, doo, 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 and you're having a good day. And all of a sudden, you get around these people and they start talking all this negativity. And this person says something like, yeah, well, how about this? And it's like a negativity contest. They're like trying to outdo each other. And before you know it, the next thing you're saying, yeah, I think I'm negative too. That spirit just jumps right on you. You were having a good day until you started talking to them. And then all of a sudden, nothing in your good life is good. Wow, yeah, you're right. I don't have any money in my bank. You know, when my wife said la she loves me last night, she didn't say it like she normally says it. All of a sudden, you second guess every good thing in your life simply by being around the wrong person, by being in the atmosphere of this negativity. And the Bible said they're like brooding vipers. Brooding vipers. Brooding means that you're thinking about it, you're stewing on it, you're, 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 you're concocting ideas. And the next thing you know, it is getting on to you. And that plaque gets into your spirit and you don't dispel it and it builds up. And that's what you speak about. Not about the goodness of God. Not about the fact that he blessed you. Not a fact that the fact that you still have a marriage to talk about. No, all you talk about is the negativity. But in Luke, the 6th chapter, in the 44th, 45th verse, it says, The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored of his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And it also says in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, in the 23rd verse, that above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The Bible tells us all these different ways of saying the same thing. We have to guard our heart, because our heart is the key, the central point of our life. And so what God was showing me is that we have to be mindful and when we look around and we observe ourselves, we have to examine ourselves for the signs of a heart attack. Because oftentimes we are walking around and we don't realize it. And one of the things that I read is when you have a heart attack, the faster you could get medical attention, the better the chances are that you will survive. So it's important that we understand and we know the signs of a heart attack. So I researched it and I said, what are some of the signs of a heart attack? 
So I'm going to give you five signs of a heart attack. And I'm going to contrast that from the natural and the spiritual. The first sign of a heart attack are chest pains, tightness or aching. And from the spiritual standpoint, God showed me that suffering from past heartaches causes your stiffness towards others. God was showing me that something happened to you. Maybe it happened all the way back when you were a child that you never dealt with. And because of that, you don't know how to show love. Because of that, you don't know how to have a loving relationship. Every single relationship you've ever had has been broken because there is this tightness and this aching in your heart. And so God is saying you got to identify that. Because that is one of the signs that you are on the verge of having a heart attack. Number two, fatigue. You are tired of doing what is right. How many people that you know that walked with us once before walk with us no more? You serve God for so long, for so long, for so long, and then all of a sudden something happened, and you say, you know what, I'm tired of doing the right thing. I'm tired of looking at other people being blessed, and it seems like they don't do the right thing. I'm tired of coming to church and seeing people saying that they're children of God, but yet they're living their lives wrong, or they're being mean, or they're saying something negative. I'm tired of it. I'm not going to do it any longer. But God said, I'm not sending you to church so that you could correct them. I'm sending you to church so that I can correct you. Fatigue. You're tired of doing what is right. Number three, lightness, uh, lightheadedness or sudden dizziness from the natural standpoint. And what God is saying, we can't seem to make good godly decisions or we keep going back and forth on our decisions. Some of you know people that keep saying, okay, yes, God, I'm going to serve you. Nope, God, I'm not going to serve you. Yes, God, I'm going to do what you said do. Nope, God, that's too hard. I'm not going to do what you said do. Yes, God, I love you. You're the, you're the Lord of my life. I love you. Everything, everything is you. And then all of a sudden, nope, God, I don't know who you are. God is saying, we're, we're wishy-washy. You're unstable in all of your ways. God said your, your back and forthness is causing you to be dizzy and to be lightheaded and to not be able to stand firm and strong and be consistent in the things of God. That consistency is not there because you're lightheaded and you are dizzy. And God is saying you're on the verge of a heart attack. The next one is nausea. You can't seem to digest the word of God. And you keep throwing it up before it gets a chance to settle down in your spirit and to cause real change in your life. I don't know about you, but I know that God has given me word and word at time and time again. But sometimes I don't allow that word to get all the way down inside of me. And before it has a chance to take hold and cause change in my life, I spit it up. I just give it up and I don't allow it to get down into my spirit and allow me to grow. If we don't allow the food that comes into our body to be and to stay and to be processed and we keep spitting it out, then we will be malnourished and we won't grow. And many of us are doing that today in the house of God. We are not allowing the word to take hold. We are spitting it out. God said we got we to gotta chew the whole loaf. We got to eat the whole loaf. That, doesn't, that means you don't, just let, you don't just hear it, but you listen to it. Listening to something means that you take it in, you process it, and you act upon it. Hearing something just comes in, and it could become white noise. You don't necessarily have to act upon that. But God says, I need you to act upon the word of God that you, are e- that you are hearing so that you can be changed. You can't become a new creature if you do the old things. You can't say that I'm for God I live and for God I serve if every time something happens you say, well, that's just me being me. 
When does me being me become God being God in your life? There's a song that says, I will make room for you. Are you making room for God or are you too full of yourself? Some of us know we're too full of ourselves. You got to make some room for God. And the last one, number five, a shortness of breath. You can't seem to speak the word of God over your life. The devil has taken your voice along with your hope. Shortness of breath. You can't speak the word of God because you've got so much stuff weighing you down that every time you try to speak the word of God, it just gets blocked. You want so badly to say and to claim the promises of God, but you're starting to doubt what God has said in your life. You are losing hope in what God has promised you. God says there is a shortness of breath. You need to speak what does a God in your life as though it is gospel, as though it is the truth, as though you believe what God said for you. Stand on the promises of God. So God said there is a shortness of breath. And as a result of these five things, God said that some of us are on the verge of a heart attack. And God said the only solution for this is that it's time that you have heart surgery. God said, I want to perform heart surgery on you today. He said, I want to perform heart surgery today. Now, the only thing that happens when you go in for heart surgery is they got to open you up. They got to open you up, and it's going to allow them to be all those things that are on in you that are not right to be revealed to the surgeon. And when the surgeon goes in there and he sees all those things that aren't right, he cleans them out one by one. He removes the imperfections from within your heart. He takes those things that are not right and he cleans you out from inside. God said, I need to open you up today so that I could get to those things. I need to remove that plaque that is in there. I need to remove those things that have built up over time that you have not dealt with. And he said, I am going to open you up and begin to do surgery. And once more, he said, if it's so bad that I can't clean you out, he said, then it's going to be time for you to have your heart replaced. He said, if it's time, I'm going to have to replace a new heart in you all together. He said, I'm going to put a clean, brand new heart inside of you that has no more of that past stuff, no more of those past hurts, no more of that plaque, no more of those old recollections, a brand new heart. You know, when somebody needs a brand new heart, sometimes they put them on a, 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 a heart transport list where you have to wait years and years and years in order to get a new heart. And you can't just get any old heart. You got to get the type of heart that is a match for what you are, for exactly the type of person you are. The size, the type, the shape, everything has to be perfectly aligned. Because if you put the wrong heart in the wrong person, then it won't work and it will get rejected. But God said, I'm going to give you the type of heart that is perfect for you, that will not be rejected. It will be everything that you need will be stored in this heart, and it will give you all that you need. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, that will renew a right spirit within you. He said, I'm going to give you a new heart. But so many times, instead of waiting on the right heart from God, we get impatient and we take the wrong heart from the wrong person. Why would you go and take a heart from somebody else that has the same problems that you have. 
That don't make no sense. And then sometimes you take the heart from somebody that has a worse heart than you did in the first place. You might as well keep your own defective heart. But God says, I want to replace everything. I want to restore everything. This is a reboot. I'm going to reset everything and change your mind, your heart, your spirit, so that you can move and be a new creature finally. Finally be that new creature. So God is challenging us. In Ezekiel, the 36th chapter and the 26th verse, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Us. What he's saying is I'm going to give you a soft heart. That means that you're going to be sensitive to the things of God. That means that you're going to have a sensitive heart towards your common man. Where once before, where you saw somebody hurting and somebody struggling, you might just walk by them and say, that's none of my business. But God said, I'm going to give you a soft heart so that when you see somebody in need, you can't just walk by them anymore. You'll be compelled to say, what's wrong, my brother? What's wrong, my sister? God put it on my heart to just say, I love you. God put it on my heart just to give you a hug. God put it on my heart to just give you a couple dollars. God said, I'm going to give you a soft heart, a soft heart that loves people, but the type of love that can change people, a type of heart that is full of true love, not lip service love. There's a lot of lip service hearts around, a lot of people that speak a good game. But when it comes time to, oh, we need to get some brothers to go help here, or we need some sisters to go visit there, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 I got a, I got a nail appointment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. I got to empty out my freezer. And it's like, what in the world? What happened to all the love we talked about? True love is taking action. Love isn't love until you give it away, the, the wine and juice to say. Are you giving your love away? Or are you a love hoarder? Just throwing it away. Not giving it to anybody. Just sitting there on the shelf, being wasted when so many people need love. So many people need love. There's an old school song back in the day that says, Love, sweet love. This is what the world needs, is love, sweet love. <laughs> what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Y'all remember that song. Stop acting like it was always saved. Y'all had your bell bottoms on, your afros on, talking about love. You were there. You saw it. You heard it. But there are some truth. There you go, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> there is truth in that. The love needs, the world needs love. But you can't give love when your heart is constricted, when your love is bogged down, too busy worrying about old past hurts. So today God says it's time for a new heart. He'll try to clean it if he can, but if he can't, it's time for a new heart. The last scripture that I want to, want to share with you is Romans 10, chapter 9, verse. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, say, believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart, say, believing in your heart, that you are made right with God. It is by confessing with your mouth then that, that you are saved. Do you notice the trend here? All these scriptures about the heart. All these scriptures about the heart. And finally, even your ability to be saved is dependent on your heart. 
Our new heart is in order. So today we're going to pray that God will create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Let us all please stand. In the name of Jesus. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word that has challenged us today to allow you to come into us, Lord, and remove everything that is not like you, Lord God. To give us, Lord, a new, refreshed, and renewed heart, Lord God, and that you would clean us out, Lord, from within, Lord God. And Lord, if it's too bitter, if it's too broken, if it's too jaded, if it's too old, Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you will give us a brand new heart, Lord God, that we could serve you like we want to, Lord God, so that we could love like we want to, Lord God, without restrictions, Lord God. We want to love like you do, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to give our love away, Lord Jesus. Lord, but we need you to clean us, Lord, from within. Lord, so today we pray, Lord God, that you will let it begin today, and that you will create in us a new heart, Lord, and that you will renew a right spirit within us. So, Lord, we pray this in your name, we pray. Amen. Hello, and welcome to NEP Ministries. My name is Pastor Lee Choate, and this is my lovely wife, Masha Choate. We're so thankful that you chose to be here with us today. We know you have lots of choices to listen and to stream from, but we're glad that you chose to be here with us today. Yes, you are welcome to worship with us every Sunday morning yes. at 11 a.m. at 955 Bridge Street here in Pelham, New Hampshire. Yes, it's an awesome time. And if you'd like to donate, please see us at Venmo or Cash App. Our tag is NEP Ministries. You can also go to our church website at nepministries.org slash donate. And we have a motto here at NEP. It's whether you're from the north, south, east, or west, come to NEP and you shall be blessed. Amen.